Okay, well, we're not gonna stop you at all during the presentation. Okay, so you guys, you guys do your thing, however you guys do it. Um, we're just gonna sit here and smile and applaud and then we'll go from there. Fair enough? Sounds fair enough. Okay, great. Abigail, take it away. Okay. Hello, Robert. Thanks again for agreeing to meet with me over Zoom. I'm extremely excited about getting your home on the market and getting it sold. Let's get started. Okay, sounds good. Robert, at the end of my presentation today, one of three things will happen. One, you will have the opportunity to list your home with me. Or two, you may decide not to list your home with me. Or three, I'll decide not to take your listing. Okay? Okay. And any one of these three options are okay with me. Okay, sounds good. Does that sound fair to you? Sounds fair. Excellent. Let's quickly take a moment and review the questions I asked you over the phone. Okay. Is that okay with you? Sounds good. Great. You said you were moving to San Diego, is that right? Correct. And you said you were moving because of a job transfer? Yep, yep, got a new job, got a promotion out there. <laughs> okay, so your job has relocated you, that's great. Yep. And you did, you, you said you had to be there before August the 30th, is that correct? correct? Yeah, so I have some time, but I can be there sooner. Excellent, great. That's just the latest. Good, good, Robert. And you you would like to price your home at 970000 is that right? Right, I just kind of done a little bit of research online, and I think that's somewhere around the price I'm looking for. Excellent, and you said you owed about 200000 is that right? Yep. Excellent. Now... <laughs> You were not planning on selling it yourself, were you? No, no, no. I, I'm an engineer. I have no idea how to sell a house. <laughs> Terrific. You did want your money out. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. I don't want to have anything tied to this property. Excellent. Wonderful. Now, Robert, there are only two issues we have to look at tonight. Number one is your motivation to sell this home. Okay. Number two is the price we set for your home. Okay. Okay. So Robert, I've prepared what we call a comparative market analysis, okay? Okay. There are two parts to this research. Okay. Part one, we real estate agents, we jokingly call it fantasy land. Okay. What some homeowners list homes for, the price does not reflect the comparables and the home does not sell. Does that make okay. sense? Sure. Part two, we call reality what real estate agents list homes for okay and sell so we're going to have to decide today where you're going to spend your time on okay. um reality yeah. is probably more what i'm looking for <laughs> Excellent. you and i are on the same page wonderful okay so the purpose of a comparative market analysis is to determine the value of your home in the eyes of the buyer Robert, do you know how buyers determine value? Well, I mean, it's, you know, real estate, they talk about location, right? It's location, 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 and, and probably, you know, upgrades and, you know, things like that of the house. Yes, that is correct. Buyers determine value by comparison shopping. They look at the price of your home based on its features and benefits, and they compare it with features and benefits of similar homes that have sold recently or are currently on the market. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Excellent, great. So let's take, for example, a car purchase analogy. Okay. If you're going to purchase a new car, mm -hmm. and one dealership had, let's just say your favorite car, for okay. 50,000, and another dealership had the same exact car okay. for 50,000, Okay. It had an entertainment system and two other extra features. Okay. Which car would be more valuable? Well, I mean, I'd go with the second one. <laughs> yes, that is correct. And why is that, Robert? Well, I feel like I'm getting all the extras for free. I'm a, a big fan of free. Good. <laughs> so, that's wonderful. So what if the first dealership put the car with no entertainment system 
and the other two additional features on sale for, let's just say $40,000. What, that is a 10 price, 10,000 price reduction, which would be a better right. value? Well, I, in that case, I I'd rather take the first one. Okay. Why is that? Well, I mean, for $10,000, I mean, I mean, I feel like the stock features on the cars these days are good enough where I'd rather take the $10,000. <laughs> yes. So as you can see, if you want to increase value, you either A, lower the price, okay. or B, simply add more features and benefits for the same price. Does that make sense? Yeah. Good. So, I mean, unless you're planning to add more features and benefits for the same price, are you? No, no, I, I think the home's ready to sell. Okay, then price is the only issue. Can I show you what I mean? Yeah, sure. Okay, so let's take a look at the three comparables I included in your listing packet, okay? Okay, sounds and good. I'm going to share my screen with you. Okay. Can you see my screen, Robert? Yes, I can. Excellent. Okay, so let's take a look at the three comparables I included in my listing packet. Okay. okay. So comparable number one, it is just like yours. Mm -hmm. Okay, so how many bedrooms are there? Can you three. see the screen? Yep, three. Excellent. So there are three bedrooms, just like your property. Same as mine. Yes, and how many bathrooms are there? Two. Two, Same just like mine. your home, right? Right. How many square feet is it? 1740. So I got them beat by eight feet. <laughs> yes, Robert. Do you know this neighborhood? Uh, yeah, I know the neighborhood. Excellent. And have you seen this house? Uh, I saw the, I, well, I mean, during COVID, I mean, we couldn't go to open houses, but I did take a look at like the virtual tour they had online. Excellent. So based on the features and benefits of the home, your house is better, Robert. This, okay. this property has been remodeled. It is located in, excuse me, this property has not been remodeled. Okay. It is located in a cul-de-sac. The roof has to be replaced. The windows have to be replaced. And as you mentioned, it is eight feet smaller than your property. <laughs> right. <laughs> and to be frank with you, I called the listing agent and she shared with me that the owner passed away and that the grandchildren painted the home and relisted the property to do a quick sale. Got okay. it. So this is not like your home. So I'm going to go ahead and quickly show you the pictures because I know that you've seen this, okay? Well, that's good because I don't really like the price. <laughs> that's true. Now, let's take a look at the second comparable. Okay. Okay. So the second comparable is just like your home. How many bedrooms are there? Three. Yes, there's three bedrooms. How many baths are there? Two. Two baths, okay. And how many square feet is it? 1,800, so it's, so it's bigger than mine. Yes, and do you know this neighborhood? Uh, I mean, I know the neighborhood. I, I know where it's at, yeah. Okay, great. And have you seen this house? Same thing. Um, couldn't go to any open houses during COVID, but did take a look at the virtual tour. Yes. So Robert, based on the, few, uh, the features and benefits of this home, this house is a little better than your property. Okay. This home has, as you mentioned, it, it is bigger. Mm -hmm. It has 99 square feet more than your property. The kitchen and the bathrooms have been completely remodeled. Mm -hmm. This property has a brand new roof, all new appliances, and a new refrigerator that were included with the sale. This home has a family room and a living room and an additional small office space. Got it. Okay, do you see that? Yep. You know, Robert, what price are they asking for? Well, it looks like it's sold for a million. 
yeah, well, they were asking for 929,900 and it sold for 1 million. Mm -hmm. So now let's take a look at the third comparable, okay? Because this is very important for you. And I know that I'm just gonna briefly go through the pictures. I know that you've seen these pictures. Right. Let's take a look at the third comparable, which is extremely similar to your home. How many bedrooms are there? Three. Three. How many baths are there? Two. Two baths. How many square feet is it? 1748, the exact same as mine. <laughs> yes, that is correct. 1748. Do you know this neighborhood? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I know the neighborhood. Excellent. And have you seen this house? Same thing, virtual tours online. Good. So Robert, based on the features and benefits of this home, this home is extremely like yours. It's similar to your home. Okay. The home has been remodeled. Both kitchen and bathrooms have been remodeled. The square feet is 1,748. This home has no additional family room and no additional office space. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this home has the same layout. The right. loss of is the same as yours. Mm -hmm. The only major difference is that they haven't upgraded their entire home in order that they may be able to bring the property up to current selling standard. Got it. Okay. So Robert, what price were they asking for? Um, I can't see the price that they're asking for. I saw that it sold at 965. Yes, 965. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they actually asked for that and they, they sold it for that price. Yeah. But look how long it's been on the market. Seven days. Seven days. Mm -hmm. To a cash offer. So mind you, they sold it to a cash offer in seven days. You need to be in San Francisco, excuse me, in San Diego by the end of August, right? Yeah. <laughs> Excellent, Robert. You know, how does this time frame work for you? I mean, it works fine. I mean, I, like I said, the end of August is the the latest, but I mean, I could be there tomorrow to get started on my job out there. So Excellent. seven days is seven days is fine for me. Excellent, Robert. What price do you feel we should use to create value in the eyes of the buyer and get someone to determine to buy your home versus the competition? Well, I mean, I, I still kind of like that 970 number that, you know, we, uh, we had previously talked about. Okay. So Robert, now that you've seen these prices, mm -hmm. I'm going to recommend a price of 950000 Will you list your home with me for that price today? Uh, I don't know. I don't know, Abigail. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I kind of want to maybe talk a little bit about that price a little bit more. <laughs> okay. Robert, what price do you absolutely have to have? Well, I mean, I'd like to have 970. Okay. So based on that, there are a couple of real important questions I need to ask you. Okay. Specifically, why do you feel your home is worth 20,000 more than your neighbors? Well, I mean, I just think that, you know, the way that the market's going, uh, I mean, people seem to be paying more. So it's not that there's, you know, it's that, yeah. but mainly... I mean, the house has been completely upgraded. I mean, the kitchen is pretty much brand new. Um, the flooring's okay. brand new. I mean, I think that adds some value. It does. It does. I'm going to be frank with you. In today's marketplace, that means you simply brought your home up to selling standard, just like the other property. They needed to upgrade, do the upgrade so they can sell the property. So, okay. you know, all homes need upgraded kitchens and upgraded bathrooms, right? Right. So let me ask you this. If a buyer wants to buy your home, but they plan to get rid of the kitchen cabinets, the black granite kitchen countertop, uh -huh. or your bathtub, and the black granite backsplash, the uh -huh. moment they buy your home, uh -huh. how much is it worth then? Well, not very much. Not very much. <laughs> exactly, Robert. I do have a question for you. Did you add that to your home for the next buyer or for your own enjoyment? Well, no, I mean, I did it for, for myself. 
Okay, good. At least you're being, you're telling me the truth. You're being frank with me. Yeah. You were, you know, Robert, if you were purchasing a home and two similar homes were for sale, one for 970000 and the other one for 950000 wouldn't you want to use the extra $20,000 to do whatever you wanted to the home? Yeah. Don't you think most buyers will feel just like you? Probably. Of course they would. That's why I'm going to recommend a price of 950000 Based on what we know, do you want to list your home with me for that price today? Well, I guess, Abigail, my, my question then, you know, is, you know, I did have another agent that said they could get me, you know, more uh, a higher listed price for this property so i mean you know i I mean what's that about (laughs) i see so let me ask you this other than the commission someone else giving you a higher price point or do you have any other questions no i mean it's the price point and then yeah just going over that commission and uh, again just to verify we're on the same page i see so if we can agree on the commission and would you sign the contract with me today Yeah, if we can agree on the commission and the price, sure. Excellent. So all we need to do now is simply sign this contract so that I can help you get what you want in the time that you want. Wouldn't that be great? Well, yeah, that'd be great. But I want to go back to that agent who said that they could get me a higher price. I mean, I see. what 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 do you have to say about that? No, no, I agree with you. Yes, I completely understand. You know, and I can appreciate that. What you may not understand is this, an agent that will list your property overpriced assumes they can take the listing now and then start beating you up on the price week after week after week after week. Is that what you want? Uh, no, that, <laughs> no, I don't want to go through that. No. Robert, who would? They're afraid to tell you the truth up front. Robert, do you want the truth? Yeah. Of course you do. <laughs> Everyone wants the truth. You know, let's do the right thing and simply sign this contract so that I can help you get what you want in the time that you want. Wouldn't that be great? Well, what's the harm in listing it high? And just, I mean, we can always come down if we need to, right? You know, that's an excellent question, Robert. I understand you want to list high to leave room for negotiation, but have you considered the problem that creates for you? No, tell me about it. Well, Robert, Most people won't even bother looking at properties that are priced too high. Would you rather have a bidding war in your home or not have an opportunity to negotiate any offers at all? No, I want a bidding war. Excellent. Robert, we want a bidding war for you as well. Okay. All you need to do now is simply sign this contract so that I can help you get what you want in the time that you want. Wouldn't that be great? Yeah. But okay. So, but go over again, the, the commission again, I just want to understand this. So how much exactly are you charging to do all this? <laughs> That's an excellent question, Robert. Have you reviewed my plan of action yet? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're actually the only one who sent me one. So yeah, it looks very good. Good. I, I Gosh, that's great. So basically, Robert, we will do all of the 27 items I lined out in my action plan. And I only charge... for all of it. All you need to do now is decide how much you would like to pay the buyer's agent. So I get to choose how much we want to pay the buyer's agent? Absolutely, Robert. So I only pay you 2.9. And if I want to pay the buyer's agent 2%, I can do that? Yes. Yes. Okay. So that's four. So that's, so I'd only be paying 4.9%. So that is correct. All right. All right. Well, why don't we just do that then? Why don't we just pay the buyer's agent 2%? Okay, great. Let's go ahead and sign the contract so that I can help you get what you want in the time that you want. Wouldn't that be great? Sure. Let's do it. Excellent, Robert. I look forward to helping you with this new endeavor. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Excellent. Sounds great. I'm trembling. <laughs> oh, Lord, oh, 
Oh my gosh. I'm like, when is Robert going to end asking those questions? Oh my, well, <laughs> Abigail, Robert would have ended it when you put him in a boxing clothes. Yes, uh, I know, I know, I know. But that's, I was like, is this too that's quick what to Robert, do? <laughs> that's what Robert was doing. Yeah. Uh, but I have to tell you, awesome, awesome. Even though you didn't box him in, you handled every single one of them and you didn't look down at a piece of paper. I... So unless, unless you have it on a teleprompter, <laughs> I mean, that was amazing, Abigail. I, I was, you know what? I was thinking, what is he going to ask me next? And keep smiling, Abigail. This is what I was thinking in my head. Keep smiling, keep smiling, keep smiling. You know, don't look away because I, when I do the scripts, I actually look away. So I'm always looking somewhere or closing my eyes. And that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to close my eyes. So. Well, that was great. That really was great. Um, I, I liked it. I liked the cadence. Um, I clearly liked the fact that you were talking in to the camera. Um, is that pretty much all memorized? Yes, uh, for the most part, I did have um, on the side, I do have, um, whew, I'm so nervous. On the side, I do have uh, a the objection, breath. a little bit of the objection handlers. So yeah, like trigger words that would help me uh, memorize because I've noticed that when I was, uh, practicing with uh, Cass that uh, he would have to give me a trigger word so that I would remember. And sometimes when I get very nervous, I have to close my eyes so I can remember. <laughs> so I was hoping not to close my eyes. <laughs> well, that's okay. That's okay. How, however, it has to be done. And you can have some of the scripts laying around in front of you. To, yeah. and you, can, you can look down. Look, it, it's, it's perfectly fine. As long as you're not looking down, reading it, you know, for the whole time, right? Yes. But but you didn't do that at all. You um, you you handled it very professionally. Good. Uh, uh, very powerfully. And uh, you know, there wasn't. Uh, I mean, I don't have any. I don't have any suggestions other than the box in clothes. And 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 quite frankly, I. I, I kind of like that you didn't do it because it gave it was an example of what happens if you don't do it, what could happen, number one. And number two, it really showcased your command of the objection handlers. Okay, great. Um, <laughs> <laughs> now that I'm done, I'm happy. Um, the one thing uh, that I would say is that I was a little bit... Uh, 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 nervous because uh, Robert mentioned that he couldn't hear me that well. So I was trying to speak a little bit louder. I don't know if you uh, saw that. But no, there is, there, and there is, uh, your volume is down slightly and you probably should look at that or maybe have your husband take a look at it or something. So, something's not right. Okay. Yes. But he linked, yeah, he linked uh, two screens and he's like, you know, make sure that you are, you know, you see yourself as well. So you can remind yourself to smile. And I said, okay, because he said that when I was doing it with him, he, I, I seemed very tense. Like I was very tense and I couldn't. Yeah. Remember. You're very focused. Be yes. Because I'm looking at a small little black dot and uh, which is the, you know, the camera. Um, put behind it, just tape behind it, a big goofy sign that says smile. <laughs> Really, seriously, okay? Okay. So just, just something to remind you to smile. Um, just a trick I use on my scripts, especially if I'm gonna talk for a length of time, is at the right of my scripts, I always write on every page, slow down, smile. Okay? Excellent, that's a great but you idea. have a You have a million dollar megawatt smile, use it. Thank you. Okay, or a million megawatt smile. I guess that's what it is. Um, okay, all right, good stuff, Robert. How did you feel about it? Uh, she did great. She did use a box in clothes, by the way. Uh, really? I didn't. Yeah, she I said. I I said um, she, when she went over the price. I said, well, I want to talk about this price more. And she said, okay, um, if we I can think. agree on the commission and the price, would you sign the contract? I said yes. 
The only difference was that she went straight into asking me to sign the contract before she handled the objections of the price and the commission, but that's okay. All right. I, I thought, you know, as a someone, as the person role playing, I felt completely comfortable the entire time. I, I think one of, you know, Abigail's reason she's so successful is I don't think she ever makes people feel pressured. I think she does. It really comes across as a, a genuine that I'm here to help you and inform you. Like, I'm not here to take your money. I'm here to inform you on the best decision possible. Like, it really comes across that way. And she speaks very clearly. So I know exactly what she was saying, what she was doing. Like, she pauses. She, you know, makes, she asks me a lot of questions. Like, every time she would say something, she's like, does that make sense? Do you have any questions? Do you understand? So, um, you know, I, so it's, it's very easy to follow along the presentation. So I, I thought you knocked it out of the park. I think you did a really great job, especially because I know that you are terrified of public speaking. <laughs> terrified <laughs> is a very small word. <laughs> yeah, it's not I, I want to, I, on that subject, I want to ask a question because yeah. We've been working together, you and Robert and I and the role play partners, you know, for a few years now, you know, and, and you come to the party as really a very strong, competent and capable uh, buyer's agent who want, who came to our organization in large part to learn how to be a great listing agent, Absolutely. right? I mean, that's the, that, that's the, the transition here. That's the thing. And you're a very good buyer's agent and, and made good money um, doing that for many years. Um, and, and you struggled in the beginning a little bit committing to, to the scripts and dialogues. So there was a transition in this last year during the COVID year where I think you made the commitment that you were gonna come out of COVID uh, knowing the scripts and dialogues, correct? Yes, that is correct. And, and there were some days that you weren't sure that was going to happen, right? <laughs> yes, yes. Well, it happened, okay? It clearly happened. Um, how much time did you invest in this, in, in learning the scripts and dialogue? You're, you're at almost every class in the morning, correct? Yes. So you said it. I, 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 I decided that I was going to, you know, be committed to this and do it every morning. I've only missed one or, you know, a few times here and there because I've, you know, as, as you know, I'm taking care of my mother and sometimes, you know, things happen. Um, and I've, I'm taking care of some properties in Mexico, but uh, other than that, I've, I've been committed. So I'm committed to working and continue to work on myself. I do want to better myself. I do want to be 100% a listing agent. And um, I want to be, you know, I want to be able to sell properties. And I want, I want to spend some time with my family, you know, Saturday, Sundays. And uh, I wasn't doing that before coming to your office. I appreciate that. Thank you. How much time after the hour, do you spend during the week perfecting your listening presentation, do you think, and learning the objection handlers? So it took me, because you know this, uh, COVID just happened. Uh, it is basically taken me, uh, I, after I role play, I do wake up a little bit earlier and I try to either get an hour in there or 30 minutes. And then um, I try to do it before I go to sleep. And okay. uh, right now I, I'm going to start doing it three times a day because I know I am, <laughs> I just, <laughs> I'm, I went to uh, um, Lakewood uh, Village and I'm trying to take another listing in that area. And um, as you know, we're closing on Harvey Way and that man is going to be selling between 1.5 and two. Uh, and I, I definitely want to increase my price point and I was very, um, <laughs> I was energetic. I went there, I was, at, I was uh, aggressive when I sat down and I asked the questions. Um, 
And I feel like the guy, this is why the guy wanted to give, give me a second interview. And he wanted to interview me for the second time. So I'm going to go ahead and do my entire listing presentation. And I hope that I'm able to do the best job that I could possibly do for him. Well, I know you're going to do that. Uh, prior to the learning the scripts and dialogues, you weren't that confident on the listing presentation, were you? No, I was not. Okay. And so now the knowledge does equal the confidence, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Because <laughs> when you don't have like 30, 40 people looking at you, I'm imagining there's 30 people around here. When you don't have 30 people looking at you, you, uh, you know, and you only have husband and wife, you can do a fabulous, fantastic job, job because you can actually present your material and you can also, um, you know, put some enthusiasm into it. And, well, you, uh, you know, you, and you do that. That's great. Um, any positive comments, uh, that you know, else? Neil, just one more thing for me, um, I thought was really neat. So Abigail sent me a, a pre-listing package. Uh, she emailed it to me and I, I give credit. Mo the, all the people that I ever role play with do that. So that's really nice. She was the first person that actually put my name on the pre-listing package. Oh. <laughs> so most people will send me like a pre-listing package of, Hey, this is a listing I did the other day. And it'll say like, Mr. or Mrs. John Jameson or whatever the case may be like, okay, great. I'll be John Jameson today. Abigail actually created the package that said prepared exclusively for Robert Hertel. So it just goes to the, my, I, I say this all the time. It's one of my favorite Mike Ferry quotes when he says, poor practice, no matter how much you do will not make you any better. And you always say practice at the level you want to play at. And I think that's one of those little types of things that if you're going to do a listing presentation role play, send the person a pre-listing package, make it made out to them, like really pre-qualify people. I mean, I, all the stuff that we went over when she said, let's recap what I, we went over on the phone. We actually did that. You know, you're moving to San Diego, you're doing this, like, I just give her a lot of credit for really taking the practice seriously at a high level. Yeah, good stuff. Good stuff. Uh, Patty, did you have your hand up? Did you want to share something? Sorry, I saw you were waving. Oh, I, should, I wanted to say, Abigail, wow. That was amazing. <laughs> I mean, just looking at you, the lighting is great. I love how you have your chair tilted. You Ooh. look like so professional. And um, you smiled and the speed was like very calm and you responded. So it didn't sound scripted that you inserted like, you know, certain things to Robert. It, it was great. Great. I'm glad. <laughs> Is there quite, you know, as I say, Abigail, we're either an inspiration or a warning in life. Oh, yes. You are quite an inspiration today. Thank you. Good job. Anyone else have comments or yeah, to. she was absolutely great with the listening. Oh, so calm, so you. confident, and the biggest smile, million dollar smile, even if she didn't want to handle any of them. <laughs> so Good based stuff. on the anchoring the seller on the calmness, taking control of the listening presentation and answering the questions in a professional manner, explaining the comparables, everything, and everything was perfect. A billion, billion dollar smile. I wish I had a portion of your smile. I could make tens of times more. <laughs> That's great. Uh, can, I have, can I ask a question? Uh, yeah, sure. can I ask a question? Sure. Um, something, something I was conscious of was uh, there was a lot of giggling. And um, that's something I'm trying to work on, but I wonder what other people's opinion is. Cause I, I thought it was a bit too much and I feel like I do the same thing, but maybe, maybe it's, it's like, I don't know more. It, it, it uh, makes you more personable. I'm not sure what, it's what is the nervous. consensus. Huh? <laughs> it's me being nervous. Yes, absolutely. I'll, t I'll answer that question. Um, I, yes, at one point I did get nervous and then the, uh, I believe I, I would have to take a look at the video again and I would have to critique myself as well. Um, but ner nervousness, so, so to that point, Abigail, I will say when you get nervous, you do that, that's, 
that is something you do a little bit. But from my perspective, I thought it was very wonderful and very nice. I will tell you, if you guys watch Karen Bernardi's listing presentation, Karen Bernardi uses laughter in her listing uh, very, very intentionally. Okay, it's, <laughs> I can't believe this. Or, you know, she'll go into something. You guys have heard me do it, you know, uh, where, where um, uh, even, even in the morning, when I leave a message in the morning, I'll, I'll kind of giggle a little bit. There's nothing wrong with it. Don't, don't be self-conscious. Just keep practicing through it. And that'll, that'll help you. Okay, absolutely. Good. Neil, Neil if you don't Thank mind you. me piggybacking on that, I wanted to say that I think personally laughter adds a human element to the presentation. It breaks down somebody else's walls. It makes you seem a little bit more relatable, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, I also wanted to say, Abigail, you, you're fantastic. You did a great job. Your oh, tone, you came across very kind, very nice um, throughout the point. But at one point, Robert tried to push back on price and you kind of stonewalled and you said, okay, I'm going to be blunt with you. And I was like, whoa, <laughs> whoa, good job. I just want to say great job. <laughs> you have to put right. the brakes on something, right? <laughs> you got you to put up a wall somewhere. Good job. Okay, what else we got out there? I think uh, Abigail's voice is, I don't even know how to put it, but it's so smooth and she spoke so clearly and slowly and very easily understood. There wasn't any like really talking to any fast or anything like that. She really talked slowly and clearly her cadence was perfect. Yeah, Tim, that's what I wanted to say. That's what I wanted to say. Yeah, she spoke slowly, clearly, you know, every word was pronounced very clearly, you know, make it very easy to understand. And also she made it very conversational, I would say, you know, she put some giggling and laughing there. I think that's a, that's a marriage. That's a good thing. Make it more personable and, <laughs> um, and, uh, just, yeah, it's, it's great. You're very good. Abigail. One thing I want. One thing I want to point out is, um, if you can, when you do the comparable, how many bedrooms, how many bathrooms, how many square feet, if you can point it there, I think that will be more <laughs> clear, right? Yes, I froze and I said point, point, but I, I, I kept getting nervous and I said no, just. I felt like, and thank you so much. I will have to work on that. I did, um, I did do that, and that is something that this is the first time that I actually do my uh, listing presentation in front of everyone. So I will keep that in mind for next time, and I definitely want to do it again. I, I, I love uh, uh, when you guys. But you uh, did an excellent job. Excellent job. Yeah, thank very you. good. Thank you a lot to me, Vaughn. You're welcome. I'm driving. I, I I was listening, but once in a while I would saw your expression. Yeah, you always have your big smile there. That's great. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Next time I will extra point and I will circle the items. Thank you, Abigail. I'm so inspired and uplifted. I'm encouraged to keep going. Great job. Keep it up. Thank you. All right. Good stuff. Anyone else? I'll Have you go. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, thank you. This is Rosalinda. Um, Abigail, you did awesome. I think you set the bar high. I think initially when you started, I thought it was a little slow for me. But then when you, you obviously picked up the pace and then when Rob were, was giving you the objections and I can see that you were kind of thinking about it, but you know, they were coming to you. And, and then the, your pace again matched that pace that you started with. So it didn't necessarily look like you were, like you forgot and you were thinking about it. It looked natural. Thank you. So, Kath and I were working on that. <laughs> yeah, no, so, yeah. so overall it just, it, it blended very well. And I think you did a great job. And that lipstick is just gorgeous. You look great. Oh, thank you. Appreciate it. I appreciate that. Thank you. All right. Good. Oh yeah. That, sorry. That's something I wanted to say. Uh, the the presentation, the the camera, the lighting. You know, everything looks perfect. Thank you so much. Good. I do appreciate it. Good stuff. Kaz, um, did you have a comment? Yes. Uh, congratulations, Abigail. Great job. 
I mean, great smile, million dollar smile and voice. And uh, you're a great inspiration. I'm going to practice a lot with you. Oh, well, thank you so much. I do. <laughs> thank you. Thanks. Thank you for being there for me. And thank you for, you know, encouraging me to, you know, do this. <laughs> thank you. Boy, you got a lot of compliments on your lipstick color in the chat box. <laughs> I'm, I'm getting I'm, gonna, I'm getting embarrassed. I, I clearly don't have the right color on. I've got to work on that. <laughs> wow. Oh my goodness. I love you guys. Great. Good stuff. All right. We have anyone, uh, any other thoughts or comments before we close out here? Yeah. Hi, this is Tiffany. Abigail, thank you so much for that. Um, you sounded so professional. And it, it's almost like, oh my gosh, is that you? Because you sound so different and professional. And I like how you speak very clearly and loud and made your point to just the tonality of every every end of it. It's just great. I like it a lot. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tiffany. I just started. It's so, um, <clears throat> and, and, and Neil is right. Uh, you know, it's a mixture of everything. I am a little bit, I, I'm, I'm not going to say a little bit. I, I am nervous, extremely nervous, because I know that I'm presenting in front of, you know, you all. And I know that you know the scripts very well. 66 and, eyes right now. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I can't see. I don't want to look at the other screen and look at the number. So Calm can, down. Calm down. Yes, yes. But I can tell you this that I just started, Neil, and you remember I was on and off from Zoom, on and off, and I was thinking, why am I doing this? Uh, is this really going to work? And then, uh, you know, I started using the scripts, and as I was sitting there presenting to people, even to buyers, I would say things that would, you know, like, is this okay with you? Or, you know, let, let's do the right thing and just simply sign this contract so that I can help you get, you know, even for buyers, I was doing that. So, um, I know that it, it's going to help me and I'm gonna, I know that I'm gonna get better at this and I know I'm gonna, be, I'm gonna get better at this, I know for a fact. So that's my, my goal is to get better at this before the end of the year. Fantastic, that's great, love it, great story. Hey, Rosalind, are you there? I'm here. So I wanna continue this theme for just a minute about mm -hmm. the, the scripts and dialogues. Um, I had a conversation yesterday with Rosalinda and, um, and, and she's not new, new to the business either. She's been around the block a few, few times. And we were talking about the scripts and dialogue. We were actually talking about a listing presentation that she went out on, or maybe, it was, maybe she didn't make the presentation yet. Maybe she was, was setting up the appointment. But she's talking to Rosalinda, you were talking to the client and the client threw some objection that we've been working on and you just nailed it, right, Rosalinda? I'm trying to remember what uh, objection, but yes, I've been using pretty much all the scripts and now they're coming off um, just like a, like, what's the word, like by default, they're just automatic almost coming out of. Right, you, you had, you had the, whatever the objection was, I, I can't remember right now either. Oh, it was the, the uh, potential listing when I was calling just listed around and he said that he had a friend. Oh, right, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, and and you like, went, oh, yeah, you know, it's, almost everybody does. And, you know, that, that objection. <laughs> favor, blah, blah, blah. And do you want to, can I give you a second opinion, right? Yes. And he was like, oh, yeah, that sounds good. And, but it was like second nature. It just bounced out. And it's kind of like with Abigail, like, who are you? You know, <laughs> it's just not me. I'm like, wow, I can't believe that came out. Well, <laughs> is Neil behind me? <laughs> I know. He would have been so proud of me. <laughs> I know. But that's exactly the point. That's the conversation I want to carry through here because some people don't think it can happen. And we were talking about thinking big yesterday in a, in a group. And the, the, one of the things about thinking big is what's the conversation that's going on in your head, okay? When you're all by yourself, what's the conversation that's going on in your head? And I think some agent, well, Abigail's kind of getting it. Kaz, uh, we had a, uh, a presentation with Kaz today. He clearly is getting it. Of course, Yvonne is getting it. Tess and Melinda, you know, have been getting it for a long time. But, you know, some of the agents, you know, don't think that this is going to happen for them. All right. 
then all of a sudden, because of the time, effort, and energy putting in there, that all of a sudden, the scripts start popping out in the weirdest places. And that's what I'm talking about here. Continue to be consistent in the learning process. And then one day you will be an overnight success and you will look back and say, wow, that wasn't as hard as I thought it was going to be. And here I am. Don't stop memory. doing what you're doing. Sorry. I'm sorry. Elizabeth, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I said muscle memory. Muscle, exactly. Muscle memory. All right, everyone. Okay, Robert. Did you go away? So uh, Tuesday, we have Yvette doing her listing presentation. Uh, does anyone want to do one next Friday? Great clothes, Robert. Love it. I know. I know. <laughs> I know. Well, I don't want to put people on the spot because I know this is a very nerve wracking thing. So anybody, does anybody want to volunteer to do it next Friday? No. Robert, I have it's a huh? it's, it's not regarding, uh, are, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, I can hear you. Um, I spoke to someone, a client, and they told me that they had a property in Mexico, but they wanted to sell it from here. Is that possible? Uh, like they want to sell it themselves? Well, they want to use an agent in Mexico. Yeah, but if I could find someone from here is like. Yes, yes, I can. Uh, I'll show you how to go to the uh, Century 21 global referral site to find an agent out there. Okay. Uh, I need that info too, Robert. Okay, okay. Possible. Sure. Thank you. Robert could do a mini class on that. Oh, that'd be awesome. No, I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> how, about, how about being a role play partner then? <laughs> um, uh, yeah, no, I'll send out that information. No problem. Okay. Uh, all right. So next Tuesday we have Yvette. If anyone wants to do it next Friday, let me know. If not, I have plenty of uh, other stuff we can do for a twelve fifteen class. So I don't want to put people on the spot because I know it's nerve wracking. I don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and if anybody wants to do it again at um, Abigail, <laughs> I, I, I just saying. All right. Okay, everyone. Um, good job. Let's who's uh who's role play? Uh, so we got uh Bisma at one, Iris one thirty, Patty at two, Vicky two thirty, and then Cindy and I are here for open form at three thirty. All right, everyone. Good job. All right, go get them. Good job, Abigail. <laughs>